The current run of Blue Beetle is a fun, colorful, action-packed love letter to not just Jaime Reyes, but to the Blue Beetle legacy that everyone should be reading. But before I go any further, hi, I'm Damon, host of Super Saturdays, a comic book media podcast, where we focus on your favorite comic books, TV shows, and movies to figure out if these projects will stand the test of time. So a little bit ago, I had an interview with Josh Trujillo, who's the current writer for Blue Beetle. And he also was the writer for a little comic book review we did previously called Graduation Day, which was a Blue Beetle prequel to this ongoing series. So let's hop in. We hit the ground running by seeing Jaime working alongside new characters, Dynastis and Tita, take down the Mad Men. And the art is amazing. Adrian Gutierrez's art is kinetic, lively, and very fluid in all of the action scenes, while Will Quintana's colors is basically the cherry on top. Similar to the recent movie, the story takes place in Palmera City, as Jaime is working at his Tia's restaurant during his first year post high school. We got the whole gang in this book. We got Paco, Brenda, a new character Victoria Cord, and we even have Ted Cord here mentoring Jaime. The Horizon and Alien Race Sinking Sanctuary in Palmyra City has named Jaime and the other Beatles, Dynastes and Natita, their champions. Though the Horizon are trying to get acclimated in human society, the humans, as expected, aren't as welcoming. Which, might I add, you live in a world where aliens are on the Justice League and one is the poster child for Metropolis, but you know what, then again, maybe that's because the Horizon don't look human. I have thoughts on that, but you know what, this is not the time or place for that. Anyways, at the end of the first issue, we are met with a huge moment that introduces us to an amazing villain, the Blood Scarab. Now before I would divulge details, here's a little spoiler alert. The Blood Scarab brutally injures Ted Cord, putting him out of commission for the rest of this first story arc. We learn that the Blood Scarab has a vendetta against Kajida, Jaime's Scarab, that stretches all the way back to the original Blue Beetle, Dan Garrett. Ka'ef Ra was a powerful blood sorcerer that was a tyrant to his people, and Dan stumbled across his tomb and found Kanji. He then used Kaji's power to help stop Ka'ef Ra. Now the Blood Scarab has found a new host and is seeking more power and destruction. We're getting an expansion on the lore of Kaji Da, the Scarab. Is it just science tech from aliens, or is there magic at play? Well, yes. Well, no. Uh, well, sort of, kind of. Jaime is left with a serious question, should he kill the Blood Scarab? He's phased with this question throughout the entire first storyline. I love seeing the moment that he had with Starfire talking about this. All of this culminates into a beautiful tribute to the late Keith Giffen in Hunt for Ted Cord, where Jaime teams up a booster goal to help save Ted through time. Now I know I hopped all over the place, but I gotta leave you wanting more, right? So let's get down into my ranking of this. My rating for this first storyline of the current Blue Beetle run is a 5 out of 5. I love what the Beetle team are up to on this book. I appreciate the incorporation of old lore from the previous Beatles and how firmly planted it is in the DC Universe. The art is beautiful, fun, kinetic, heavily anime inspired, and the writing its just full of a lot of fun. There's moments where there's a lot of comedy, there's moments when there's very serious moments. They hit everything right on the head. And I gotta say, I'm liking it so far. Issue eight came out last week at the time of this recording, and I've just been loving it. So go check it out. But the real question that I have for you is, are you reading Blue Beetle or are you planning to? Let me know in the comments and be sure to follow us on our socials. And as always, see you soon, soups.